This is the Made It in Music Podcast, show 124. Welcome to the podcast, where we bring you tools and resources to help you go full time in music and to stay in. The music business is a roller coaster ride, changing faster than any of us can pay attention to. We all need a competitive edge to stay ahead and to stay successful. What's working, what isn't, and what's coming? That's exactly what this show is all about. Back again with Full Circle Music, the Made It in Music podcast. Hi, this is Seth Mosley, host of the Made It in Music podcast, and today we've got a good one. A lot of you guys have been writing in and asking about CCLI. What is it and how does it apply and help music makers just like you and worship leaders from all over the world make a living writing songs for the church. In this episode of the Made It in Music podcast, I get to sit down with George Ross, who is the CTO, and Malcolm Hawker, who is the CEO of CCLI. CCLI is an international Christian copyright licensing organization, which is actually owned by CSAC now that serves over 250,000 churches, schools, and other organizations in more than 30 countries. I have to say, this was one of the most enlightening episodes that we've had in the entire 124 podcast interviews so far. CCLI is very focused on empowering worship in the Christian community by providing affordable and legal content, media and resources, and making them easily accessible. So learn more about the ways that they help churches and make a living in this business and so much more in this special episode. Malcolm and George are here to share their incredible story about how they are helping others make it in the music industry, and they're here to help you do the same. Hi, I'm Seth Mosley, and we're live here at the Full Circle Music Studios in Franklin, Tennessee, and I've got with me two incredible guests today from CCLI. We've got Malcolm Hawker and George Ross, president and the CTO of CCLI. And for all of you guys out there, worship leaders, artists, songwriters, wondering what is this black box that we know (laughs) as CCLI, you're about to find out today. We're going to pull the curtain way back. So Malcolm and George, thank you for being here today. It's great to uh, be here, Seth. Yeah. yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, and you're 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 not from these parts, right? I can, uh, no, I'm. I'm, from the <laughs> I'm not from these parts. I'm from the deep south. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm from Australia, and uh, I've had the privilege of being here in the U.S. for three years, and okay. uh, have enjoyed every minute of it. Okay. And how long have you been with CCLI? Uh, it's coming up to uh, twelve years. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a good, uh, exciting, uh, yeah, r- enjoyable uh, twelve years. Mm-hmm. Uh, originally from the, uh, I hail from Sydney, Australia. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, role that I had there was as the Asia Pacific Managing Director, and uh, really enjoyed every part of that. Uh, worked a lot through uh, Asia, and uh, and then also. Uh, three years ago moving here and then uh, two years ago taking uh, over the reins from our founder, Howard Ruchinski, um, mm. who um, uh, did an incredible job uh, starting uh, the company uh, way back in 1988. It's mm. great. And George, where are you from, my friend? Um, that, we, we'd spend the rest of the time of the podcast <laughs> answering that one. Uh, I'm a military brat, so okay. I, I grew up moving around. So I've lived all over the States, uh, a lot of my life actually in Europe. Yeah. Um, so, uh, spent about eight years, uh, lived in the UK, lived in Germany, lived in Italy, yeah. um, and, uh, got to CCLI, a little bit of a crazy route, was in the military, myself in military intelligence, uh, got out, entered the tech industry, and, uh, before CCLI, I was doing consulting for big universities, Fortune 500 companies, mm. and, uh, but it always, always been on my worship team, uh, been involved in the church, and when the opportunity came to kind of take everything I'd learned kind of on the corporate world and, yeah. Uh, kind of apply it to the world of worship. Uh, it was a perfect opportunity. And I've been at CCLI about well, coming up on nine years now. So mm-hmm. That's awesome. So CCLI started, um, how long ago did you say it was? Uh, 1988 uh, okay. in uh, Portland, Oregon. Okay. Yeah. And how long was it just, you know, Howard and his garage and until it kind of broke out of that phase? Uh, it was 
probably not Howard in his garage, but it was Howard <laughs> in a uh, small room at the church, yeah. uh, that the church which was uh, back then it was Portland Bible Temple, and mm-hmm. uh, today it's uh, City Bible Church, and. Um, it really wasn't very long. Uh, the the company, because of the just the, the need within churches for uh, making music legal and uh, providing the resources for churches, uh, churches uh, just wanted to uh, license, wanted to do the right thing. And um, today we uh, that that grew out of that small room now to uh, CCLI working with churches right around the world. Uh, we are working with uh, over 250,000 churches that we are directly licensing today. And uh, here in the US and Canada, that's 162,000. And so just such a significant, uh, something that started just as a ministry of one church has now become such a significant need globally uh, right around the world. Sure. And we talk a lot about in our company, you know, every business really should be solving some sort of problem in the world. Um what would you say CCLI's mission is or what's what's the, the problem that they're helping people solve? Well, our, our goal ultimately is in, is to empower worship. And uh, we actually uh, make that simple uh, by providing the resources that churches needed to uh, easily uh, worship. I mean, th- there is such things as copyright, there is such things as laws. And uh, we actually not only support the churches in actually providing those resources, but also... Uh, songwriters like yourself who um, are actually out there writing songs and using that talent, that God-given uh, ability to actually live and, yeah. and, and write and, and make a living. So uh, we, in a sense, uh, sit in the middle uh, of both. And ultimately, being that one-stop shop when, when churches actually have a question about copyrights or just about uh, anything to do with music, if they're looking for a song, we actually are a place that can actually uh, give that information to them. Mm. So maybe break it down for the viewers. What is, I guess, what is the business model? How does how does CCLI make money and how do they help artists and songwriters uh, make a living as well? Yeah, um, it's actually really easy. Um, so we actually work with a pretty big uh, group of publishers. Um, I don't remember how many is the last count, but it's in the thousands of, of publishers. And we offer a blanket license at its core um, so, you know, anyone who's been on a worship team in a church knows that, you know, uh, whether it's a physical copy that's going to be in the music stand or a digital copy in like a planning tool or on your iPad, uh, you need to get music and lyrics um, out to the church and projected for the congregation. Um, so what we do is provide a blanket license so churches aren't really worrying about, well, is, do we have coverage for this song or that song? So we bring it all together. Um, and our core licensing allow them to make those copies and project uh, the lyrics for the congregation uh, to make it really simple. Um, and then on the other side of it, you know, we, we collect those licensing fees and then make sure songwriters get paid. Um, because, you know, these, these songwriters were called uh, to write these songs for the church and then providing them a mechanism that really allows them to pursue that passion. Um, in a way that's not driven by economics, but driven kind of where they've been where they've been called. Sure. So every time the artist or uh, you know worship leader performs one of the writer's songs, I guess it's it's tracked in some sort of a system. And are they paid like per time it's performed, or how how does that whole thing work? Um, it's it's actually the the performance side obviously is handled by companies such as uh, ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC. Uh, what we provide is it's it's really the reproduction right. So when churches are actually copying lyrics, uh, when mm. churches are actually copying sheet music, uh, when they're actually reproducing that uh, that content, uh, projecting it up on screen, we actually license and we make that part of uh, the rights legal. Uh, we also do some video uh, licensing as well, so churches can use uh, video content in, in services. And so how we track that is the church... Uh, for instance, if they're making copies on a Sunday, they would actually then come back and report to us, these are the, the songs, uh, this is what we've made copies of, and then we put that through our system. And then of all the money that we collect every six months, we, we pull that together 
and we divide that out uh, by the, the reported uh, songs that uh, churches have told us. Mm. Yeah, and a little fun note of U.S. copyright law, um, there's actually no performance right needed for mm. um, performing a song in church. Yeah. So that's actually exempt uh, okay. from copyright. So, And that's why we just focus on the copying activity, uh, because that's, that's the actual need in, inside of the church. Meaning the lyrics on the screen or... Sheet music. Yeah. So the actual, kind of yeah, and the, and the little details. So the projection of the lyrics is fine. It's the making the copy to get them mm -hmm. uh, to the projectors. I mean, when CCLI started, the world was very different, right? If anyone remembers, yeah. like, you know, the overheads. Sure. Right? Someone had to make a copy to get the thing up on the overhead. And yeah. Someone made a copy of uh, a piece of music to put in a binder. Sure. Uh, yeah. For those who remember those days. So. Yeah. So I would imagine um, with CCLI being the resource that it is, it's probably enabled a lot of. Uh, worship leaders or artists or songwriters to go full time writing songs for the church. Is that has that been the case? Yeah, I mean it's amazing uh, as we get to interact with these songwriters to kind of hear the you know the the ability. The, their stories about you know what I was doing this um, you know and I was living this way and uh, you know doing six odd jobs and then leading worship of my church and then all of a sudden this is it, I'm doing full time um, what I feel God's really called me to do. Mm. And it's always amazing when you connect with someone and realize that you played at least some small part mm. yeah. um, in them kind of fulfilling that. Do you have one story, particular story like that of a, of a person, maybe you don't even have to name a name, but um, that stands out like that in your mind? I know I do. Uh, I have one too. But yeah, you it was just recently uh, where we uh, had met uh, one songwriter who originally was from the UK and uh, he was going to take on the world and um, he was going to make a lot of money. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so what ended up happening uh, was that didn't quite come about. And so what he, he ended up doing, he, he relocated here to the US and he really just started to set about serving God and serving his church. Mm. And uh, he um, he actually gave me an analogy. He said, my, my job, he said, I'm like a, a boat builder. Mm. And he said, my job is to build the boats. Mm. And obviously he was talking about songs and songwriting. And he said, my job is to build that boat and I set that boat a sail. Mm. And he said, it's not my job to try and put the wind in those sails. He said, I go back to shore and I build another boat. He said, it's up to God to put the wind in the sails of that song. And he said, so I'm not looking out there saying, how's this song doing? What's it, uh, you know, how's it tracking? Uh, how many people are making copies of it? I'm not looking. He said, I'm back writing another song. And he said, what had actually just transpired just uh, a few months before was he said, I got my first check mm. from the UK from CCLI, and he said, I actually framed it. Wow. He said, I took it to the bank, and he said, I asked if I could have the check back. They gave it to him, and they said, I framed it, because he said, it wasn't me trying to make it happen. He said, ultimately, he said, God was the one that showed me that as I continue to follow him, he will make my, my path mm. uh, available to, uh, to earn and to, to make a living. Wow. And so that was an exciting, I mean, I think that's, for me, those are the stories that we hear, uh, and George, you've got another one, yeah. where it's just, it, it, it makes it all worthwhile. Yeah. Uh, that as we continue to serve the church, as we continue to serve the publishers and songwriters, <clears throat> God uh, continues to provide. Mm. And that's the exciting part. Yeah, mine's not as, as spiritual as his. Um, <laughs> so, you know, well, because he'll tell the story better than me, I'll, I'll pull out his name to protect the innocent. But, you know, a, a songwriter of note from Texas, and he says, you know, I was just the weird one in my family, didn't go to college. I was leading worship in this little church in Texas. And, uh, you know, kind of, kind of got some money together, did an album, and, uh, you know, he got his first check from CCLI, and he's like, oh, well, this, is, this is all right. Um, and then uh, six months later, got a second check, and he goes, holy cow, <laughs> this is amazing. By the time the third check came, uh, because the album kind of blown up and he, and he started doing some more stuff, uh, he got the third check, and I always remember this line, he goes, honey, we can finally buy a house without wheels on it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, and of course, the follow-up you know, to that, that humorous part was, he says, you know, what it really enabled me to do was when I'm pursuing something, I can pursue it on the merits of what God has called me to do and not based on me worrying about a financial outcome of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
I mean, it was a great way to set up kind of kind of that part. But it's those stories like you know Malcolm was sharing as well that yeah. kind of really when we get up and go to work, it's you know there's a very practical thing we do as a business. Sure. Right. And that's great. It's, you know, there's a need for it, but it's those stories and understanding that we're playing some small part in yeah. doing that. So, and I think it needs to be said too a lot of these, uh, I mean, a lot of the income that people are actually earning is, is, is small checks of $5, $10 uh, every, every, um, twice a year. And so that's not a lot of money. Uh, but then there are some that are able to, uh, make a little bit more of a living uh, sure. from that, and so, and we play a small part in that, and and uh, yeah, that's that's exciting for us. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the nuts and bolts. We we got to talk a little bit this morning about some of the new ways that you guys are helping. Um, I, I like that analogy, mm -hmm. helping the boat builders have their yeah. boats get out there, put some wind behind the sails, and you guys are kind of on on the front end um, of even creating a lot of content for that. Can you talk a little bit about what your vision is for what you're doing right now? Ultimately, our heart and passion is to, to resource the church. I mean, that's that's where, I, I similar to, to George's story, I, I grew up in the church. Uh, I actually was ordained in, in the ministry. I was pastoring. Uh, so I was uh, in church, working, leading a, a congregation, and and I it, ministry has always been what uh, has been my core. And even when I actually uh, joined CCLI, uh, I asked the very first question: Is it about ministry or is it about money? Mm -hmm. And if it's ministry, I'm all for it. If it's about money, I'm not interested. And so that really for us is is and and obviously the answer was it's ministry. And the core of this is actually providing the resources available. And so we actually have our song select product, which actually provides sheet music content for churches. But today we, we're just providing even more. We're looking for how do we uh, practically equip. We're providing articles for equipping. Um, we're actually doing uh, content where we're uh, having people hear the story behind the song mm. uh, and, and helping people connect more with not just a song, but why the song was written. Uh, and uh, there's, there's content like that, that ultimately it's, it's, we're finding more and more uh, as we push information out to the churches, it's actually the practical equipping is what people are looking for. Mm. And so we're just providing ways that we can either create that or partner with someone else uh, that is actually doing that already, that we can actually help provide that for churches. Mm. That's fantastic. Do you, do you care to share a little bit of what you guys are doing on the content side? Yeah, um, there, there's a couple avenues. I mean, the, the main what we're focusing on now is our, our doors are open to anyone who wants to come in. Um, that you know, kind of in our, in our family of songwriters, um, and we'll do an interview with them. Um, we'll record a couple songs and we'll put it out to churches. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, we want to connect churches with songs that are going to basically help that congregation congregation connect in worship. Yeah. Right. Um, and to provide a platform that that enables that um, is great. So. Um, and we've we've been blessed. I mean, when we started that about 18 months ago, I was like, you know, maybe we'll get three or four people in in a year. And, uh, you know, it's like a little side project to see how it goes. And I mean, I think we did like 17 in the first year uh, acts coming through um, everyone from, you know, it's their first EP to uh, the Titans, uh, senior saints uh, of our industry. And we're just we've been blown away yeah. uh, by kind of the response and uptake on it. Um, and we just hope to do more great things. Um, on the practical equipping side, we also know that, you know, most worship leaders are volunteers. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it's more like hashtag surviving Sunday, really, for a lot of these guys. <laughs> um, and then so um, content that really helps them do their job better as a worship leader. So whether it's practical things like... Uh, you know, mic vocal techniques or something for front of house guy because they're an integral part of having that worship experience or, um, you know, avoid sound disasters. You know, tr we've, we've seen a great response in just kind of these really practical things um, that enable teams just to function um, mm, yeah. as well. So every opportunity we can find in content that's going to connect, that is going to help that that church get through that Sunday Um and then, you know, reach that goal of getting the congregation vertical. Mm. Yeah. Um, so. Well, I love it. You guys kind of mentioned even in passing that you're you're not playing favorites. You know, the churches obviously yeah. sometimes will have their favorites, but you guys are providing a, a, an equal playing field for yeah. people wanting to do this and people who are called for it. Yeah, exactly right. We 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 see ourselves as Switzerland. We don't uh, we don't favor any any songwriter, any publisher. 
Uh, and you're right, churches do have their favourites, uh, but our, our task is just to make ourselves available and there'll be those that uh, choose to take up those opportunities. And so we really don't uh, vet that, that side of it. Yeah, that's good. Well, I want to switch to a little more personal, practical questions. Yeah. And I'll, I'll start with you, Malcolm. But what is the number one book or record that you would most commonly recommend to people? Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> now you've put me on the spot. That's a, that's a tough question. Um, I'm very eclectic in my music and uh, I typically uh, switch very quickly from uh, the one to the, to the newest yeah. uh, album that's out. Um, I, I won't highlight one because then sure. I might be seen as uh, not being favorites. playing <laughs> favourites <laughs> and not being Switzerland. Um, what about books? Uh, and then books. Uh, I mean, apart from the Bible, I mean, hey, you know, that's uh, that's always the favourite Um I mean, I, I have loved a lot of business books, yeah. uh, and uh, and so I think uh, one of the ones that I've loved is Good to Great, uh, yeah. and and it, uh, you know we can be good or we can be great, and it, it's a it's a book that that helps us understand the difference and uh, what the blockers are from being great, and yeah. um, and that's also in our Christian life, in our Christian walk. When I did my uh, my schooling uh, just a few years ago when I did my MBA, I realised that there were so many crossovers between uh, business books and our Christian walk and our, our, our journey. And uh, that was an uh, incredible eye-opening experience for me. It's mm, good. Favourite record? Favourite book? Are uh, you, you can't, to say you, your favourite record? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I don't have a favourite because I'm a musician myself. So, you know, you know how that goes. There's this week favourite when I was 16 favourite. Um, and plus, I have to be Switzerland, right? We, I yeah. can't say. Uh, on, well, on what that about side. book that you most commonly would recommend to people? Um, it depends on... Actually, I'm a pretty voracious reader. And so um, it depends on where someone's at. Okay, um, so let's, let's take the audience who's watching this, aspiring music maker, somebody wanting to get into the music business, maybe not knowing where to start. Um, see, I read a lot of general business. There's one that I think has a great perspective. I was Malcolm Glad Gladwell's uh, David and Goliath. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Very specifically cool. what he Very talks nice. about is taking something you might perceive as a disadvantage um, or someone else might perceive as a weakness, and that can actually be deployed as your strength. Mm. Um, that's so that's a really good one. And, and part of it is just getting people to shift their perspective because people like to focus on where they're not great and saying, you know what, really, the things that make you different sometimes can be your absolute strategic advantage and differentiator. Yeah, it's so, good. Love that book. I love uh, Outliers is mm, one of my actually, personal yeah. favorites that I recommend to people a lot. So um, we talk a lot about on this show with our guests about success, but even more valuable is failure in terms of being a learning tool, in terms of being um, something that can alter the the, mm -hmm. the behavior or the course of, uh, of an artist's career, of a business, of people's lives. So we, we like to highlight, uh, you know, this is kind of a weird way to put it, but do you have a favorite failure moment that like was a pivot and you did this and then it happened and then you're like, okay, I'm never going to do it that way again. It could be related to, as it relates to CCLI. It could be as it relates to your personal um, journey in the music business as well. Well, you're honestly picking on one of my favorite topics um, because <laughs> I, you know, I've been around technology long enough to bend through the boom and bust of, of the tech industry. So I've had some magnificent opportunities to fail and been part of some pretty spectacular dot-com uh, failures as yeah. well. Um, and it's actually when, when I interview people, it's one of the questions that I ask yeah. um, is, tell me about um, one time where you failed big yeah. and then how are you different uh, because of it? Because, yeah. you know, for me, it's, it's I believe a lot of times we're more shaped and have more bias out of, yeah. out of failure than success. True. Very true. Um, so I don't know how much time you want to spend on, you know, me doing wrong database commands and, <laughs> um, you know, coding for three days straight, uh, you know, marathon coding to get stuff ready for clients. But, uh, yeah. you know, being in the tech industry, uh, you learn to become really resilient from failure to failure and uh, um, learn to really embrace, embrace it as a tool. Yeah. yeah. So, what about, I, I dodged your question. No, it's good. Part. And, you know, without giving away too many specifics, but is there anything in the history of your part at CCLI where you're like, man, I wish we would have done this different or this different? Oh, where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we start coffee every morning with that conversation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, there's there's always things that uh, I, I, I think failure, I mean, without failure, we, we, it's difficult to learn. And yeah. um, 
I mean, I, I talking about the failures, uh, my biggest failure was actually I failed my schooling mm. uh, right back in the very beginning. And I think for us uh, and for me, uh, we you you just learn to trust God. Yeah. And in the midst of that failure, and people say, well, you know, they think if I failed school. No, I failed. I failed, you know, I, I didn't get to university, I didn't get to college. I, I started working in a supermarket. And ultimately, it's about just... It's, it's about taking that very next step. What do you think God's saying today? And sometimes we get it right mm. and sometimes we don't. And it is about that learning. It's about perseverance. And uh, I sit here today by the grace of God. Mm. Uh, it's not because of, uh, of my talent. It's not because of my skills. It's because of his provision and his grace. Mm. Uh, and, and for any songwriters out there that are, or, or people who are looking to progress uh, their craft, it really is relying on God and just hearing what he has to say mm. uh, and taking that one step. And that's what we do in the, in the mm-hmm. office. It's, there are sometimes we, we, we pray, we say, God, show us the way. Uh, and sometimes, you know, we hear him loud and clear. And sometimes we don't hear him loud and clear. And we think, hey, you know, if we had it done this, it might have been a little bit uh, different. But, you know, we see the hand of God on CCLI uh, right through sometimes the decisions that we made that we think, oh, that might not have been a great decision. Mm. Uh, But then also some of the successes that we've had. And I think there's the good news is we've had more successes than we've actually had failures. Mm. And, uh, And that's just been encouraging. But again, it's not because of what we've done. It's because of uh, God with us and God in us. And that's the part that I think uh, keeps me waking up every day, coming to the office because I know he's in the midst. It's good. So let's talk about uh, what is something specifically that's working for you guys as a company right now, as CCLI? I think connecting with churches. Uh, I think the, 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 the stories that come back to us uh, more and more just continue to be thank you for, so for being there. Thank you for being able to serve. Thank you for the resources that you're providing for us. And, you know, again, ultimately for us, it's, it's, we we're looking to provide things that we believe the church would, would, uh, would value from. Even as we talk to people who are looking to, uh, you know, communicate with churches more effectively in whether it be uh, music manufacturers or we're looking as we work with them and say, how do we provide uh, discounts for churches? How do we provide things where, where it's, you know, because we know that most churches aren't mega churches. Most churches, uh, you know, they, they have very few dollars available. And if we can actually be a part of helping to make those dollars go further, uh, that, that is what I think uh, is a great thing that we can do. And that's one of the things more and more that we're attempting to do. Mm. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I sum it up by saying, uh, listen way more than we speak. Yeah. Mm. Um, so listen to churches. Um, as we have people and artists come through and songwriters come through, listen to them. How can we better serve you? Mm. Um, and, and that's really it. Uh, continually asking that question. Uh, how can we better serve you? Uh, actively listening and then going back and really then out of that, that's all our strategies are formed kind of out of those those conversations. We're like, well, where's the need? Where's God leading us? Um, and then uh, how do we not as individuals get in the way of that? Sure. And our task ultimately is to be problem solvers. And so, as George said, it's listening. And I know that there are some that might think that CCLI sits back and looks at how we can get more money from the church. And, and that's not the heart and passion of what we do. We ultimately, the church is telling us it would be good if you could solve this problem for us. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we we always, it, it's, it's what the church is asking us to do, what they're saying. And then we look at, okay, how do we actually help solve that problem that they're facing today? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, streaming was one of those more and more churches were looking to get into streaming, but they knew that they weren't legally allowed to stream. Uh, and so some churches had, had gotten into difficulty by not having the permissions needed to stream. So they said, are you able to help us do this? More and more today, we created a streaming license and today more and more people are actually have the opportunity to do streaming mm. because we provide the way for uh, to make that legitimate and, and legal for them to do that. And no viewer left behind or listener left behind. Streaming, when you mean that, you're not talking about Spotify, you're talking about them broadcasting. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So broadcasting their service, putting their service onto uh, platforms like YouTube. So, you know, either live streaming or where it's being archived uh, for someone to watch it at a later date. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of churches now saying that I, we want to take that opportunity up and, and are doing that. Mm, it's good. So we'll jump over to you, George. We've got one more. This, these are kind of the last of our full circle five questions. <laughs> um, if CCLI, your business, all of this stuff vanished tomorrow, but you still possessed all the skills and experiences to do 
anything and you had to start over from square one, what would you do? What would I do? Well, hopefully, uh, I take a minute just to, to sit and think. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've worked hard for um, more years than I want to think about uh, and and look for the direction because I have a lot of passions. Yeah. Um, as a musician, um, I have a little, you know, do a lot of audio myself um, and really just pray for the opportunity that just like when I got the job at CCLI that brought my technical expertise together with my passion for worship, just kind of look for the, look for that opportunity. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so that means, uh, you know, I'd spend probably a month sitting up in my little studio uh, yeah. playing guitar yeah. and praying about things. Yeah. So it's good. What about you, Malcolm? Uh, I, I guess uh, I never grew up thinking that I was going to be a fireman or a builder or, a, or, or uh, it was really just whatever skills I started to learn. I, I learned early on that I was uh, good in, in the business realm. And so that's where I uh, started to see myself, but if everything just, if, and we ask ourselves this question uh, all the time, if, if, I, if I was no longer doing what I'm doing today, what would I be doing? And, and ultimately I would be serving somewhere. I would be looking for someone that actually uh, could use my skills. And, and a lot of the years I did a lot of volunteer work and, uh, and, and ultimately that's probably what I would, I would go back to. Uh, uh, we're actively involved in our church uh, and uh, the, um, you know, we Friday nights uh, on, once a month our family goes out and feeds the poor, and uh, you know we we have good skills in in church life. Obviously, as I, I said, I was involved in pastoral ministry, so I would probably gravitate towards something along those lines. Sure, uh, but again, where my business skills could be used in those areas. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's great. So, are there any initiatives or projects that CCLI is currently working on that you'd like to share? Is there anything we can't share right now? <laughs> we're working on plenty. I mean, we're never not working there's, on something. There's, 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 a, there's a lot we're, we're working on. I mean, ultimately, again, just continually, it's, uh, it is uh, providing resources to the church. You know, one of those just recently was uh, connecting with um, uh, Worship Musician Magazine. So we, we pushed that out. We've been doing that for years, providing discounts for Worship Leader Magazine. But Worship Musician is now being provided free for churches. That was a new initiative that we started. Uh, we, we're doing more content work, as I said. We're looking to get more into equipping. Uh, ultimately, we're looking to do a, a little bit more of uh, two-minute uh, videos uh, or content where just educating people around the areas of copyright. And uh, there's a lot of misconceptions out there. Most people have never read uh, the the U.S. Copyright Act or any copyright act around the world, and uh, that's our job to help get an understanding of that. I mean, we're not lawyers, so we're not experts in that, but uh, it's to help. And again, just simple ways to do education, and, and that's one of the newer initiatives that we're working on. Mm -hmm. And I know there's, you know, CCLI TV is is a, a a place where people can find resources. Can you talk about what you're doing with that? Yeah. Um, so again, it's back to the practical equipping and helping churches find songs. I mean, at the end of the day. So um, we talked about just any artist who happens to be like in town um, and they reach out to us. So they'll come in uh, and we'll do an interview with them. Um, just about a little 15 minutes, um, three to sometimes up to seven songs um, and help them connect on that one. Um, also on the content side, we're not experts on a lot of the technical side. Like, you know, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm a guitar player. I should not be telling any vocalist how to use a mic. Uh, so I'm not going to write that article. Um, but trying to find experts in their respective fields and try to aggregate that content. So find kind of working with great partners to find great content and connect the church to that content. Um, and so CCLIT, we actually folded into this new thing called worshipfuel.ccli.com. Mm. Um, we're trying to kind of ag aggregate all of that equipping um, kind of things. And, and as Malcolm said earlier, our mission is to empower worship. And empower worship takes a lot of facets. So there's the practical, which we do in the licensing and when we do in song select. Mm. Um, but it's also in the 
helping churches find new songs or songs that are connect with their congregations. And also just, you know, now even more pulling around those team members and helping the front of house guy be better. Um, you know, helping them to understand, you know, a lot of are going in the journey of like, should we use in-ears or wedges or, you know, even practical things. Those are really the the week to week kind of discussions teams are having and really help, how can we help them have resources to kind of get through that stuff. So when they show up on Sunday, they can focus on that that sure. job without all these other distractions. So yeah. What, what would you say are some of the, uh, signals that you know when when a songwriter is singing a song working in a church how, how do you know if 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 the global church is going to gravitate towards um, you know because you guys brought published the uh ccli top 100 mm-hmm. songs mm-hmm. and that's been going for a while now yeah. are there any things that you would kind of look at as indicators whether a song's going to work or not we, we our song select uh which is a product which is actually uh, provides the sheet music and, and lyrics. So that would probably be the first place that we start to see it because that's the place that we can certainly see as people are getting new content that the church is beginning to learn that song. And and that would be the first indicator for us that we could see a song was going to be become uh, popular. And then we actually see it in our uh, other reporting tool where we're, we're actually seeing churches are now actually using it and they're actually uh, singing it on Sundays and, and they're reporting to us that they're making multiple copies of that. Because Song Select is for the, ultimately for the worship teams mm-hmm. largely. Uh, the lyrics, obviously, there's software that connects in through an API. So we, we are aware of the songs that churches are actually uh, projecting up on screen. But that would be the first indicator. And then we start to see it uh, tracking through our other reporting uh, tools. So we do get the ability to have some early indicators. Uh, we don't publish that uh, information uh, today, in a, in a sense, like weekly charts, uh, just to see songs rise. I mean, oh, there's a lot of uh, um, a lot of questions for us to, or a lot of people are asking us to do that. Sure, uh, but uh, yeah, certainly we can see that. Has that been a decision that you guys have? made intentionally to not do that weekly or just maybe not there yet? Uh, We are now tracking it weekly. Uh, I think there is uh, interest to see it uh, published and put up uh, on the web on a weekly basis to show just indicators. And again, ultimately, this is just to uh, provide a little bit more information for for churches to see what songs that they they might like to use within their service. Sure. And to to add on to that, I mean, the... um the top 100 for us was never a big deal because for us, it was always a reflection of what the church was doing. Yeah. Somewhere, you know, through the years, it became like the, we're doing songs off the top 100. I don't know, you know, where in a history that that kind of flipped. So sure. um, for us, the top songs have never been a big thing because we're focused on all, all these other things. Um, and, you know, now we're focusing a little bit more on it. But I mean, what we've always strived to be is a reflection of what's what's happening in the church and understanding that and, and how to better serve it. Um, but it's been interesting for us um, watching how other people react uh, to something we put out. Hey, these are the songs that the church used, um, which it, which has been kind of a really interesting thing. Do you see any correlation between songs that get, you know, promoted at uh, radio and how well they perform on CCLI? Uh, I, I certainly don't see the correlation, uh, and there are some. Uh, I mean, a lot of radio airplay is uh, generally not. Uh, uh, it's not a congregational song. It's sure. not a song that people can sing in a congregation, and and the music that we largely focus on is a congregational worship, and so there will always be those crossovers. And uh, but it, it's it's. I mean, it's always that which comes first is the song becoming popular and then the radio picks it up or does the radio the radio pick up the song and then the church start using it. Sure. And we certainly haven't seen those correlations as yet. Okay. But our, our charts do weird things. I mean, so our top 100, there's stuff that's been in there for decades. Yeah. I mean, what other top chart can say, you know, really, there's songs that have been right. in there decades. And if you really look at what a, what a church is doing, you know, if you think about being on a worship team, there's an average church is going to be do between 35 and 50 total songs within the year. And out of that, you know, a lot of them are songs the congregation's familiar with, right? So the the amount of available kind of headspace, uh, both for the congregation to absorb and for worship teams to absorb, there's really only so many songs that can kind of work their way in into that into kind of into that ecosystem just because of just the natural constraints of what happens 
sure. kind of in church life around that. Um, yeah. And it's really been interesting because there's albums that have been out for like two years. And then all of a sudden we'll watch a song from that album, just all of a sudden just start climbing up two years later, right? When you, from a, from an album sales standpoint, the thing's dead and buried. Um, but then all of a sudden the church is somehow, it's it's picked it up and you'll just watch it kind of just roll up the charts two years after release. And there's some that just go straight up. And uh, it's really, if we knew the formula, uh, we'd probably, you know, not be doing this and I'd be a consultant. Uh, <laughs> uh, selling that one? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting today, and we, we survey churches just to help us understand a little bit more about what they do every year. And uh, radio t- today is far less an influencer in what's being used in the church because of social media, because of Facebook, because of YouTube. They're, they're the big places where people are getting new songs and and, and largely it's it, people influence each other. So someone else hears about it, they they talk about it, it's, it's played, they point other people to a YouTube clip or, you know, even a, a, a song select, our, our uh, sheet music platform. That's been a big place where people have found new music. And uh, and now we've got a lot of video content tied to that as well. So, you know, it's it's no one place, but uh, we certainly know that uh, it's it's word of mouth is today much bigger influencer and uh, and, mm. and social media. It's good. Well, um, Malcolm and George, thank you so much for being here with us today. How can up and coming worship leaders, songwriters, artists connect and interact with CCLI? That's a great question. So, uh, Seth, what uh, typically people would do is if um, if someone's written a song uh, that has not ever been used anywhere, uh, we would encourage them to wait. Uh, we um, uh, what we look for is if there's songwriters that it, CCLI is not the place to copyright their songs. Sure. Uh, CCLI is just the place to be the mechanism when churches are starting to find their songs, we've got it available. And so we would typically say to a songwriter, if your song is being used in more than you know two to three churches, uh, then our encouragement would be, yeah, okay, come and see us and talk to us because other churches are looking to use it. Uh, Ultimately, if it's just you in your church, we would we would suggest that you know you bless your church with your songs. And uh, but uh, we've got a team um, that can uh, just give us a call, and uh, we can walk you through uh, the process, and so you can understand exactly how to join CCLI. Uh, there's no there's no charge today, uh, and uh, yeah, we we register your songs and put your songs into our our database. Mm, it's great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you guys are. Busy, busy guys, and all the way in from Portland, Oregon, and uh, took some time to stop by our studio, so we're very honored. It's so, great to be here, and Seth, yeah. thank you so much to, for having us, and uh, yeah, I, uh, I hope uh, uh, your viewers, your listeners have learned something today, so uh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So this has been the Made It In Music podcast. I'm Seth Mosley here at Full Circle Music Studios, live with CCLI, Malcolm and George. We'll see you next time. This is Seth Mosley, and this has been the Made It in Music podcast produced by the Full Circle Music Company with editing help from the one and only Jordan Salamone. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. Follow us on iTunes. Just hit that little subscribe button. And as always, leave us a rating and review. If you've got any questions or ideas for future episodes, especially as we are planning our season two, um, just tweet us. Send us a tweet. Our socials are at official FC music. That's our Twitter. So just send us a tweet. Let us know how you like this episode and share it with a friend. Uh, show notes are up at madeitmusic.com slash 124. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode, which we have a powerhouse episode coming up. It's with Dean Deal, who is an industry music marketing veteran. Uh, one of our biggest questions that we get from academy students all over the world is how do I market my music? So for those of you guys who are interested in knowing the answer to that, next episode 125 with Dean Deal is going to be one that you do not want to miss. So stay tuned, check it out, and we'll see you on the next one. Music